You are listening to Information and Inspiration with Jen Julius, helping you take control of your own life by finding clarity, improving your communication, and building confidence to achieve your goals. For more information about me and my guest, you can go to jenjulius.com and check out the On the Radio tab. I am so excited because today I have Jackie Johansson, the founder of Finally Writing, and we're going to be discussing how to use writing for healing. Many of you know that I use writing in journaling as part of the work that I do with clients because it's such a great tool for healing, and I'm so excited to have Jackie on the show today. And so, Jackie, why don't you go ahead and say hello, tell us a little bit about what you do, why you do it, and why you're so awesome. (laughs) Thanks, Jen, so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here and to hang out with you um, this morning and share with your audience. So I just want to shout out and give appreciation first off. Thanks. Um, Thank you so much for the warm welcome. Um, I have always been a writer. I've, as, ever since I was a little girl, I, I think I've always been a seeker and longing for the question of who am I? What am I supposed to be doing in this world? What, who am I as a person, as a woman? You know, what is it that I want to be sharing? How do I want to be of highest service? It was always a question of identity, I think, of, mm. you know, trying to figure out where I fit in, how I could relate to other people and really feel authentically myself. Mm-hmm. And looking back, you know, even as a young child, these questions were very alive for me. Um, and I could see it in my relationships with other people, in my relationships with myself. And it was actually through the writing process and through sharing stories and kind of asking the question by engaging it in my journal that I, f- I felt more myself. I came to be more myself, and the the edges that I felt were a little bit blurry uh, around who I was started to shore up and concretize. So the thing that's really nice is that actually the writing has followed me throughout my path, and I hadn't always recognized that um, until really reflecting on it more recently. So, for example, I've done kind of writing in my whole academic career. So I started off wanting to be an English teacher and studied literature, studied literature and rhetoric, and taught it at the university level and shared um, writing with other students and taught them and led workshops and was at conferences. And then um, I moved into the psychology field just because part of who I wanted to be as a writer was really tapped into individuation and the the process of us coming into our own. So the psychology field and working on depth psychology and focusing on Jungian psychology and dream work and the stories and the narratives in which we hold in ourselves were a part of me. And it was something that I I used and really developed my skills in narrative therapy. And afterwards, I got an internship working with women in drug and alcohol rehabilitation and did art and narrative therapy with them. Met Jen actually working at a job after that, um, doing work with probation youth and foster youth and all kinds of um, different kids. And I would my favorite thing ever was to be working with the kids and sharing their stories and helping them develop life books and helping them unpack their experience. And what I have found doing the work myself and also working with other people is how healing writing can be and yes. how powerful it can be when we touch into the places that are difficult for ourselves, when we take control of our stories, when we own and we explore who we are. And there's something so beautiful about taking our inner world and putting it onto paper and exploring it in that way that we hold perspective and we also get a new sense of identity through that practice. So that's a little bit of where I've come from, who I am now Mm -hmm. and why I do what I do and why I feel so passionate about my work. Thank you. And I really appreciate how you kind of nailed that down too, because I totally agree that the way I describe it to people is that when you're writing, you're forcing basically one thought out at a time, which can naturally bring clarity, right? You mm-hmm. can't write multiple things at the same time. I always trick people and tell them to write two words at the same time just to see if they can try and do it. It's always funny to watch them squirm, right? Yeah. And I think that that process, what I've noticed naturally also happens is as people start using writing for healing, that the clarity that comes through the stories that can come out and get out of the body and be externalized onto paper that in itself can be really profound, even though it seems so simple when you're taking something out of the body and externalizing Mm -hmm. it onto paper, that's exactly what you're doing both literally and metaphorically, in my opinion. Yes. I so agree with you. I think that writing and 
bringing an idea or a spark or a question to form is such this beautiful bridge of the inner and the outer worlds. Yes. And I think that's why I get so excited about writing in general because language and words and I mean we're writing all of the time so there's something about it's a natural way of communication right so when we do it with intention to explore something that's going on for us or to bring something to the surface or bringing it forward our voice just forward as part of our self-care practice and part of our healing practice it's it's such a profound act because it's a communication in which we normally are engaging in throughout our days and when we do so with intention when we turn that eye inward and give ourselves the freedom and the permission and do it with courage to bring our words and our inspiration and our thoughts out and bring it out into the world we give it a certain amount of air we give it a sacredness we hold it in that space where we're actually giving time to our our voices and how beautiful is that and that's such an amazing act of self-care i think and Mm -hmm. why it's so powerful to just to just to engage with ourselves in a, in a way that's sacred that allows us to come more into ourselves because then we relate to people better we share our, our truths better we are on higher service to other people yeah absolutely and the main topics that we were going to talk about a little bit today were how to integrate writing into your self-care mm-hmm. practice <clears throat> overcoming fear resistance and doubt connecting to your intention and your purpose and why and creating from that sacred place and so i'm excited that we're going to kind of intertwine i think all of these topics into what we're talking about today but why don't we start with kind of a, what do you what do you think about the importance of I'm kind of going to throw this out there. What do you think about the importance of writing as far as should everybody do it or is it something that maybe do you feel like it's a tool that calls to some people and not others? Do you feel like it serves everyone in some capacity? Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um I think the universal that I can say as I, uh, as I, what I believe as a, as a universal statement or an umbrella statement is that we all have a call to create. Mm. We all have a creative spark. We all have a longing to be more truly solid in ourselves and how we want to express ourselves in the world. I think it's a question that all of us work with on some level. I think we all have a form that comes naturally yes. to us. So maybe we're more inclined to write, maybe more inclined to play the guitar, maybe more inclined to paint or to garden or to cook. Or There's something in us that wants to bring our creative world out and we want to be seen and heard for that. I think that's something that's really powerful and keeps us all together as humans. There's something really lovely about that. I do advocate writing for 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 the people that I work with and for the people who are really called to it and really for people who are exploring this question because I think writing is a natural thing that we do on an everyday basis I'm not saying you have to go out and try to be a perfect writer or try to get published or try to do anything like that but I I do advocate engaging with the questions that are on your heart and engaging with that through through the written word just because it's such a form that allows the questions and the answers to kind of throw, flow through us. So when yeah. we're journaling, if we just ask the question or even start off, I have no clue what to be writing about right now, but I know I feel like I should be doing this another word's going to follow and then another one's going to follow that and you're always going to be brought somewhere and even if it's just asking the question how do I want to express myself who do I want to be how do I want to share my voice that I have that's alive in me with others and maybe writing will be the end result for you maybe you want to be a writer maybe this is something that is an ongoing process for you but through the writing practice you might find out no I want to be doing this other thing or I'm so passionate about that or I have clarity about that So I really feel that writing is a tool that helps us move forward, get clarity, get focus. It allows us to kind of put our ego aside a little bit and allow for answers to come through. Perfect. Perfect. So why, why do you think the biggest reason more than anything else that people should consider integrating writing into their lives? We're focused on healing, Mm -hmm. but do you feel like there's, but, and we just talked about the importance of expressing creatively. Is there one kind of biggest heavy hitter that you think really drives it home? Why people should really consider integrating writing in? I think writing helps people become more themselves. Bam. 
There it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Found it. Yeah, and I do. I, I think that the questions that we ask, the writing process itself is in facing our questions, facing our our, our unknowns and doing so just as you had mentioned early, earlier so beautifully by bringing it out and bringing it forward and you know just as you share and you encourage with your clients it takes courage it takes focus it takes determination it takes a longing it takes an intention and I think when we hold those things within ourselves we we become more of ourselves. I mean, yeah. we're asking ourselves to step up in a certain way that's that's sacred and exciting. So that's that's a big part of why I think it's so important to integrate. And then on a practical level, we're doing it all the time, whether it's a text message or an email or, you know, a written correspondence. The more comfortable we get in our voice and the more we become ourselves and the more we hone our writing skills – it's it's just a it's kind of a win win, and I'm glad that you just brought that up around honing your writing skills because I actually want to ca- say the flip side of that that when we're journaling, yeah, grammar and punctuation don't matter. Yep. And let's just let's Jackie and I want to emphasize that right now yes. because what we're talking about around the healing component because maybe what we'll do is maybe we'll talk about both if you're actually wanting to develop as a writer, but on the other side, if you're just wanting to use writing for healing, those are two kind of different fields, right? Yeah. And I, I, I love that you had said that because I there, it actually came to mind one of my favorite books on writing is Writing Down the Bones by Natalie Goldberg. And she shares, and I'm, I'm probably going to butcher this because it's been a while since I read it, but I love it. <laughs> and a lot of her, her stuff is you know really alive in me still, But so I'm paraphrasing. Um, but there's a really beautiful thing where she knows she's in the flow when she's journaling, when the words get big and flowy and almost hard to read and the punctuation kind of falls away. And there's this moment of realizing that we've let go of control oh. of the process and the words are just coming through. And I think when we hit those places, when we're journaling, when we let go of grammar, we let go of even caring what a sentence looks like, we let go of what the content is and just allow the act to take us forward. That's when really deep, beautiful work happens. Yeah. So I, I totally agree with you on that. And I think it's really important to just allow our journal space, our writing space to be something that's sacred and safe for us. Yeah. I think, well, and I'm glad you brought that up too. I'm getting all kinds of ideas about mm-hmm. things I want to touch on for people because one of the biggest objections I get to people not wanting to start journaling is safety as far as someone reading it. Yeah. I mean, and that's something that I totally can understand, although I've been fortunate and just I don't know how, but I let go of that fear and I just almost hold the intention that no one would ever touch my journal and it's safe and whatever. And Mm -hmm. I feel pretty confident no one has so far that I know of. (laughs) And how would you address that for someone? Because we're, we're encouraging people to be pretty darn vulnerable. Yeah. Right. And really just share what's going on and let themselves flow and almost even channel, if you will, this beauty and information and ideas and let it all come out in this pure form. What do we do about keeping the journal safe? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, that's that's it, it makes sense, and I've I've had that fear as well. Um, I it brings to mind actually a memory that I'll, I'll share. There was a there's a point. This was years ago, but I was going through old journals, and I had like I had that same fear. I was concerned. I'm like, oh, this is raw. This is me. I'm extremely vulnerable here. I would never want anyone to read it. One, because I don't feel like I'm that person anymore. This is kind of a snapshot of my process. And it's, it just feels very, it felt charged. So I remember going through my journals and tearing out all of the pages and ripping them apart. And there was a point where I was like, oh, I have a lot of journals to go through. I better kind of (laughs) step this up because I have stuff to do this afternoon. So I started trying to tear out more pages at once and they wouldn't rip. And it was this moment for me. I remember it very clearly of like, I I can't rip this. And it was something that was physically happening for me, but something that was internally happening for me too. There's this throwing away. Um, I am a big advocate of, you know, uh, trusting your process and yourself. And if you do feel like you need to release and let go, I've definitely ripped out pages and burned them in the fireplace and released my words and the stories and the narratives that were painful in that way. Um, And also hopes and intentions and really beautiful lighter things too. I've released them in that way too. You know, and I've also felt like, no, this isn't the right time to rip this up. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think it's just sort of trusting your gut. And what I would share with people is that 
you know, do what feels comfortable for you. I think the writing process and the act is so important. And if you need to burn something, fine. But if you also will probably come to the point where you don't want to. Yeah. So just go for it and don't let that stop you because ultimately it's it's a fear and it's a resistant. And I totally get where that's coming from. Uh, I've felt it too. And the first question I would at, tell someone to help them move forward, be like, write about that fear. Make that your first writing assignment. Say, I, I do not want someone to read this. Why? What's going on for me there? What am I so afraid of? Is there a shame there? Is there a, a concern there? And if that's the case, writing will help alleviate, will help shine light on those dark places. Yeah. And it makes it easier for those things that we're concerned about people reading to not have as much a charge for us. So as we're going through our daily lives, that's part of the healing practice, I think, is that those darker places, those shadow places, aren't as heavy any longer. And the, the putting it out into the world, giving it some air, is something that really helps us mm -hmm. stand stronger in ourselves. Perfect. That's And I give the same tip. I'm like, if you're really that uncomfortable, burn it. It's mm -hmm. fine. But allow yourself to start getting it out of your body. Yes. To just start the practice. Oh, I love that because I, I really do think that writing is such a physical act. Yeah. You know, and that, I think that's why it's this bridging of kind of the inner and the outer worlds is that we are... I like how you put that so much. Yeah. Yeah. The bridging of the inner and outer worlds for sure. Yeah. Because it's just this... It's almost this beautiful kind of soul work that's happening, this inner this inner inspiration and creativity and light that we have inside us. And it's this natural tendency to heal. That's what Carl Jung always said that I love, you know, something from my de depth psychology days is that the psyche has a natural tendency to heal. So this idea that as we move forward, even if we're touching into places that are really difficult to, for mm -hmm. us or uncomfortable for us, that we need to just sort of trust the process because we're getting closer and doing the work that we need to do to become more of ourselves and to stand more solid in our truth and our being and our creative expression. So I think it's a physical act in that we do hold emotion in our bodies. Yes. We do yes, hold yes, emotion yes. in our bodies. Don't get me started <laughs> on this. It's very, I mean, that's, that's what comes with, you know, being in a, a human form, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, something we live with a day to day and you're so right that when we let out the things that are holding us up internally those blocks we end up with more more freedom in ourselves internally but then also in our bodies yeah yeah no thank you for that and <sighs> it's it's hard for me because i feel like there i've seen so much resistance around any type of writing or journaling with so many people. And I'd say that the safety is the big one, but then other people feel like there's a right way to be doing it. Like mm. I said, we're letting go of the grammar. We're letting go of the punctuation. You're not doing it to be a professional writer. You're doing it as a tool to deal with stuff <laughs> yes, and to get stuff out or whatever. Right. And I think that's what I really want to drive home the most is when you're using journaling as a healing tool, the point is to just write, get it out, handle it and don't put judgment on it yeah because it's more about the experience of again letting it be externalized and be able to go back and review what you just wrote mm -hmm. a more advanced topic i'm not sure if we'll have time to get to today is sometimes i'll encourage people to do something jackie was kind of discussing a little bit earlier where you're just letting things flow out of you too you're kind of in flow or maybe i also use the term you're channeling which is usually described as uh information is flowing through you and out of you and some people might say that it's coming from the universe or God or source or some higher power. That's a little bit more advanced and we're not going to dive too much into it today unless we have time. What I'm talking about more specifically is if something's bugging you, write it down, get it out of your body. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. If you're just going through a breakup, I encourage people to make lists about, okay, what were the things you liked about the person? What were the things that caused you guys to break up? And just get it out there, make it simple, almost make it factual because then that can be a tool. That'll help you moving through that healing process, right? So then we talk about affirmations and all these other great things that are, you know, getting big in the mainstream finally around these tools to help us with our healing process and our personal development. And guess what? When you create an affirmation, you write it down mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you let it be visible all over the place, right? The point is, is that when we're creating these things and we're using these things and we're writing them down, we're engaging in the writing process and it's a sacred amazing beautiful act and tool yeah 
Simple as that. Simple as that. <laughs> so I just really, I, I want to make sure that people are hearing there's not a right way to journal. Yes. Sometimes you can even just like start saying random words just to get yourself flowing. Dog, cat, tree, green. You know, just start writing random things down. It's called the stream of consciousness. Just get it out. Start going. And then eventually something will maybe start to really flow for you. You got to start somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I've had many a times where I'm like, I really don't want to be writing. or And it's usually a time where I've committed myself to write. You know, there might have been a 30-day period or something where I'm like, I'm going to be doing this every single day for this mm-hmm. long ma- amount of time. Something I commit to, but there's always going to be resistance. There's always the days. And those are the days when I need it the most. Those are the days where it's the when it's the hardest, where it's the most rewarding to have written. So the way I like to think about it. And also what I share with people is that when you're going to bed at night, what are you going to feel better having done? You're going to feel better having done like releasing, getting this stuff out, you know, committing to your own personal growth and your own meditation and your own self-expression. Where is it going to be, you know, kind of messing around online or doing whatever that we all do. That's something I do when I'm distracting myself. So I think it's about just checking in. And I love what you said about it's all about just getting started and getting in the flow right off the bat. I think yes. it's, we have a lot of tools and affirmations are great ones. Um, just starting off dog cat, like you had said, I love mm-hmm. that. Um, Stream of consciousness, getting it out. Exactly. I don't even know how many pages in my journal and even in articles that I write where I start off saying, I don't know what I'm going to write. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then all of a sudden after a Bam. final, I don't know, there it is, you know, and you start playing with ideas. Yeah. And I think it goes back to people feeling resistance too. I totally understand that as well. And when we don't know, that's okay. Life's full of lo- not knowings. And when we allow ourselves to be in that uncomfortable place of not knowing, that's that's quite all right. And it's mm-hmm. it's a good thing actually. And it helps us strengthen our musculature to go forward into the unknowns in our, our lives. So. Yes, 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 yes. And then what... On the flip side, Mm -hmm. even though we won't dive into this too much today, I do want to address if people are wanting to actually develop a more serious writing practice, perhaps they want to actually develop some creative writing skills or work on their skills as an actual writer. Where would they start with that? Mm -hmm. Same place? Just get the flow going or what? Yeah, I think the hardest part, the hardest thing for writers, hands down, is getting in the chair and actually doing the work. Mm. I think it's because there's so much resistance around it, um, even when we want to do it really badly. It could be resistance because it is such an internal process, and it's also one that people can potentially read. So is that why you named your website Finally Writing? Totally. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is because it's something... I, I, I just think it's a big um, challenge. It's yeah. something that I face too, you know, it's actually, so, even though I'm so passionate about the work and love it, there's definitely days where I'm like, oh, I really am having a hard time sitting down and doing it today. Um, but I feel so much better when I have done it. Yes. So just knowing that, um, I think if people want to start a writing process, a big thing is getting clear about doing it. I think un- not being clear, and I know you share, you work do some beautiful work, Jen, with your, your clients about getting clear on what they want and who they are and, you know, all that really good stuff. Thank you. Um, so I, I really think if you want to start a writing practice, really commit and say, this is what I want to do. I would put it in writing and, and say, this is why, and it's about connecting to your why. And it's also funny that you just said that because a lot of the really big shot coaches and motivational speakers and whatever they're always talking about make sure that you're writing your goals down Mm -hmm. that's how you're declaring them right yeah so that tying into like what we're saying is that they're the act of writing the act of putting it into physical form basically makes it become more alive yeah right puts it out in the world more the universe more and really says hey this is what i'm declaring and Mm -hmm. the fact that you just said if you're gonna if you really want to do this write down that you're committing to write right and i think people have a hard time committing to anything that has to do with bettering themselves Mm -hmm. i've noticed that a lot with unfortunately people that are struggling but really don't have the time or don't have the money or whatever to invest in themselves and their well-being right and i understand that sometimes i time and money are real you know hurdles for people however when we're really looking at something and the benefit mm-hmm. of the investment is so significant that's where we often need to say hey i'm worth this yes i 
you nail on the head right there. I this think. half hour of writing will actually benefit my life the other 23 and a half hours of the darn day. <laughs> right. And I think we are very busy. You brought up time and money as being, you know, kind of being the top excuses or resistances or reasons why. And I get it. We, our days are full. I totally understand. Um, and the nice thing about this is when we do make the decision to write, we do make the decision to commit to the practice because we want to, because we know the benefits, because we know we, it's something we want to try, whatever your why is, we find the time. There is enough time in the day. Yes. So, I mean, I just think of the days where, you know, I, I was like, what the heck? The whole day just flew by. What yeah. just happened? You know, when we get clear about what we want, and I think that's really why about it's so important to schedule or to write down your intention or your goal. When you get clear, we know, okay, I have this afternoon to do it. I'm going to dedicate at least half hour. And that's not that long mm-hmm. to just doing the work half hour, that's it. I'm going to monotask it. I'm not doing anything else. I'm going to put away the phone, put away distractions because we all know, I know I can sit on my phone and waste half hour in a blink of an eye screwing around online or on social media. Like it's so easy to do. And I think we all do that at some point. So if we just really focus our attention, hone in on it, we can knock out our writing practice easy. And all you have to ask yourself is what serves me more? Yep. Sometimes watching, you know, silly cat and dog videos <laughs> <laughs> is what we need. We need to cheer up. It's one of our happy yeah. tools, right? But sometimes doing something productive or, or cathartic or therapeutic or whatever to let ourselves really tap in to what's really going on, getting it out, processing it, bringing awareness to it. Because when we bring awareness to it, only then can we choose to change anything, right? Yes. That's Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Oh, so what you had said reminded me like when we're sitting there feeling distracted or doing something we know in our gut isn't quite the right thing or of the highest service for ourselves in that moment, there's always usually a tension kind of going on in our brains a little bit. Mm-hmm. There's always this feeling of like, all right, in five minutes, I'm going to get up and then I'm going to start writing and then I'm going to start doing what I need to do. But, I, you know, I'm going to do this first or, you know, there's always something kind of narrative and that I've learned to be a catch for myself. Where if I start hearing that dialogue and I'm playing that game with myself, I'll be like, all right, let's take a pause for a second. And, you know, maybe it's closing my eyes and taking a deep breath and doing a little bit of a meditation. Where do I, which direction do I need to go right now? Because ultimately when we're having these internal conflicts, we end up exerting way more energy than we should. And that energy is creative energy that we could be actually putting into something else. So, Mm. you know, if we're sitting there wasting our energy I should be doing this. I'm going to be doing this. You know, it's really about, okay, I have a lot going on for me right now. And this is actually some fire. That's really kind of cool. Let's, let's hone it. Let me work towards a goal. And then I'll come back and do the thing that's not as pulling at this moment. Yes, 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 yes. So using writing for healing, Jackie, let's start to explore some different areas. Mm -hmm. Because as we were saying earlier, we also mentioned writing down our goals because it declares them, right? And then you've also mentioned writing down intentions that we have and really tapping into our why. And it's funny because you and I use so much of the same language (laughs) around and when, and being a writing strategist and a a life coach, it makes sense because we're all about strategy and tools, right? Mm -hmm. Which is awesome because we know that when people use tools, they can really harness healing. They can really tap into their highest truth, who they really are, what they really want and start to commit to these things. So I was thinking that we could talk a little bit about using writing for healing more, but also the importance of intention setting and goal setting and all that fun stuff and how writing plays into that. I actually just did a presentation on intention setting and goal setting earlier this week and made this neat handout for the ladies and everything. And I just went, how neat is this to be able to explain to people in really simple terms, the importance of setting an intention and how that ties in to setting goals and how, when we're doing these things that it's actually pretty powerful and magical, mm-hmm. you know? So I don't know if you want to maybe dive into those topics a little bit or where you might want to go with that. But I thought that really addressing the goal setting and intention setting and our whys around what we want, who we are, all those fun topics, such easy topics to just, you know, simply put out there. But <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's, it's an important one. I think we all have 
goals and intentions kind of alive in us or sparks of goals and intentions alive in us, but we don't always know exactly what they are. You know, I'm just thinking about as we go through our day-to-day lives, it's really easy to be in a a place of just kind of in the flow of the day, caught in the schedule, caught in the to-do list, Mm -hmm. all that, Mm -hmm. that we lose touch with the bigger picture. We lose touch with who we want to become and who we want to be, um, whether that's an external thing of, you know, an external goal of, you know, something we want to accomplish or it's an internal one of who we want to be as a person. Who do we want to be when we're our highest selves? So I I just noticed that there's a lot of time that can easily pass. So this is an important topic to me. It's something that I try to do and integrate into my my practice um, is getting really clear on those goals and reminding myself of them, you know, maybe throughout the day or in the morning. Um, So writing is a really powerful way to get clear One, it's powerful because writing it down, as we had said earlier, kind of concretizes what it is that we're doing and what we're putting out into the world. And there's a certain power that comes from owning that and solidifying it and writing it down. But I also think that we can use writing and use that same kind of healing energy that writing holds to get clear on what we want. So maybe it is that we are writing about what is my goal? What is it that I want? Who do I want to become? And when we we do that and we use our journal and our journal practice to engage those questions, we become clear with what feels really right. We were talking a little earlier about how we hold emotion in our body. I think we hold so much intuition and wisdom in our body as well. Mm -hmm. So when we're writing, we might write down a goal and in our gut we're like, Oh, this actually doesn't feel yes, quite Yes, yes. Oh, right. I'm going to get so excited right now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, that there's a point where what we thought was our goal or thought was our ultimate intention, when we actually go and write it down and play with it a little bit more and spend some time with it, it doesn't feel quite right. It doesn't feel just really settled for ourselves. So as we play around with maybe the wording of it, might feel a little bit different, you know, and it's just like little slight shifts that really help us become stronger with what makes the most sense for us. The nice thing about writing is that it's a conscious act, but it's also an unconscious one. So we're consciously writing, we're consciously creating the space, we are physically moving a pen across paper. Yep. But what's coming through us often is unconscious wisdom. Uh So it's our intuition, it's our gut feeling, it's the words that are coming through. I'm like, wait, what? I just wrote that? You know, it's those those things that are really alive that the writing practice allows us to uncover and we start mining for gold. So when we set intentions, I think what we can do is instead of just going through and taking what's in our brain and just, okay, this is my intention. My goal today is to write down my intention, but rather maybe set aside 15 minutes. It doesn't Mm -hmm. have to be a long time, Mm -hmm. 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, whatever that looks like. And saying, I'm going to play with the idea of what my intention is Mm -hmm. and, and write about it and see how it feels and quiet your mind a little bit and allow the words to come through. And when we touch our, into our intuition, we touch into our gut feelings and we touch into how we're feeling about the words that are coming up for us. I think we engage in our, with ourselves in a more meditative way that allows really clear intentions that are more in alignment with who we are and what our actual unconscious and goals are that, you know, it's a greater wisdom that we might not have conscious access to that a ri- writing allows us to get in touch with. And uh, another piece I want to just mention quickly about goals and when you're writing down and going, oh, this doesn't feel right. Yeah. One topic that I addressed a little bit the other day in a presentation was the concept of should goals, Mm. meaning how many of the goals that you have are actually somebody else's goals that you think you're supposed to have or you should have. So maybe it's a goal that your boss has for you. Maybe it's a goal that your partner has for you. Maybe it's a goal that society has for you. What I mean by that is if you have a weight loss goal that actually doesn't resonate with you, but you think you should have it because all other women have a weight loss goal or some kind of crap like that, right? (laughs) That's what I mean by a should goal. And sometimes as we start writing down our goals and really thinking, okay, hey, what do I want and why do I want it? That's the other big piece that I'll try and briefly mention and touch on today. And share because when we really figure out what we want, why we want it, it helps us to say, oh, wait, this isn't that important to me. Why have I been focusing or wasting all this energy on it, right? What the heck? 
And so I really wanted to just touch on that too, because as we're writing our goals down, sometimes if you're feeling that resistance or that, eh, I don't know if I really want this, you maybe it's time to shift the wording. It's time to shift what the goal is, or maybe it's time to realize this isn't one of your goals. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. No, that, I think that's brilliant. And I love the idea of, I love your language there. Should, I, like, when, I like when people call me brilliant. <laughs> that makes me feel really good about myself. That's not very common. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, I think it's. I think should go goals. I, I, I think that's a great way to frame it. Is is something that we all work with. I mean, yep. it's just society of pressures, who we think we should be, yep. other expectations, and writing allows us to really sink into who we are and get clear about what it is that we want. Yep. I know that's been true for me for sure. Like th- as I use writing as my own healing process and through just really wading through the muck of narratives that I've put on myself of who I should be, what I should do, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Once you start clearing that a little bit, um, we get, we get more in touch with, you know, the core of who we are. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So talking a little bit about the why component Mm -hmm. as we're writing goals down, hopefully we're also writing down why we want to achieve these goals. Yeah. And the power behind that is that when you have a really deep seated emotional connection to your goals, that's what's going to keep you compelled to achieve them. Mm. It's not just, oh, I want to do this, right? Like, that's it. It's, I want to do this because what will it provide me or my family, my life, my future, my path, really? Mm-hmm. And when we're writing these things down, we're taking it a whole different level and declaring it even further. Because like I said, if it's in your head, that's one thing. But as Jackie said, when you're bridging the inner and outer worlds, when you're taking it from inside your head floating around and you're putting it on paper, now you're putting it out in the world in a way bigger and almost more real kind of way. Yeah. I think that's very true. Um, And I think that's the beauty of doing writing in this way when we're really setting the intention for healing. So even if we're unclear about what our intentions are around our goals, when we set the intention to write and to explore this, it it, it opens that space for us. It creates the space for us to really touch into what what our ultimate goals are that makes the most sense and what that why is. I think the why is such an important question. I love what you said about having a deep emotional connection because you're right. That's the charge. Yep. And it reminds me of that example from Natalie Goldberg's book that I love so much that we know we can actually see in how our words are flowing on the piece of paper, whether they're big or heavy or tight, what's going on for us emotionally. You know, oh, we can, interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. So we get just more information. And I think writing allows us to have more perspective on our experience, more perspective on our process, because if we're not so much in our heads. Our heads can be crazy making sometimes and allows us to release all that's not serving mm-hmm. and allows us to get out all that we need to let go of to allow for whatever it is that needs to come through to come through. So asking our why while in that space of letting go makes our why more unique to ourselves. It lets go the whys of other people, let yeah. goes the whys that we might have held on to that we feel are right for us. And it allows us to think of, okay, this is this is this is really for me and this is what I need for my soul's growth and for who I want to become. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I love it. So believe it or not, we're about 15 minutes out. Oh my gosh. From, yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> and so I kind of want to make sure that we really capture for everyone the main points that we were going to discuss, that we wanted to discuss, which we've already discussed quite a bit today, but I want to really summarize too and mm-hmm. make sure we're clear about how to integrate writing into your self-care practice, how to overcome fear, resistance, and doubt, connecting to that intention, purpose, why, and creating from the sacred space. So I really want to make sure that we're really driving that home. So why don't we go ahead and start trying to summarize those things? Yeah. So that first point about integrating into your your life, really. Um, and, Where can and- they start? Like, let's break it down. Go get a little notebook. Yes. It doesn't have to be, let's be clear, it doesn't have to be a fancy journal. In fact, I don't like buying fancy journals because then they look like journals. Right. And if you have fear around someone reading your journal, don't buy a journal. <laughs> <laughs> buy a notepad that looks like a notepad and you make it your journal, right? Isn't that, that's a, that's a brilliant idea, isn't it? I love it. Yeah. I'm going to make, I'm going to get a picture of myself and I'm going to put brilliant on it with an arrow pointing to me. 
And I'm gonna just I'm gonna start using that for my marketing. <laughs> so good. Yeah, no, I think that's really smart. Yeah, go out, get a notebook, get something that feels comfortable, whether it's a legal pad, whatever it is you feel compelled to write on. That's yep. fine. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to, you know, get something fancy. Just do what you're called to do. Um, and then also one thing that I am kind of an advocate for is get a pen that feels good to you. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily have to be, because I, Jen, I love what you said, that yes, you don't have to get a big showy notebook. I think that's, you know, so that might work for some people and great. If that gets you going, Amateurs cool. do that. But- Amateurs do that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But yeah, you have a lot of flexibility on the paper that you use and all that. But I, I kind of advocate, I love having a really nice pen, you know, yeah. and maybe just even something that feels good. And sometimes a ballpoint pen, that's like one of those cheapo ones is the one that feels right for me in that moment. But yeah. I think just like kind of trusting it because you want your pen to flow. I don't want you to be writing. And then all of a sudden like, I'm in the middle of something really great and this breakthrough's happening. And now I'm out of ink because it's a junky pen yeah. and something's going there. Yeah. So but I also want to stress what you were saying earlier that don't let any of this hang, you know, be a hang up to get yeah. started. Just go ahead and get started. Um, I journal on napkins sometimes if I yep. need to. If I'm getting hit with something, then I'll just grab whatever I have and start writing it down. Yep. I've used apps on my phone. I've used, you know, I write emails to myself. I'll mm-hmm. use notepads. I'll use mm-hmm. post-it notes. Yeah. So just be really mm-hmm. flexible with it. And I think the nice thing is that we tap into our creative energy when we do that. Like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go with this and write on this post-it note or this napkin. I think that's something that's really cool. And it actually will perpetuate the the creative energy that's going through because you're honoring it by writing in that moment. Yeah. So dive in, get that. Um, the other thing I would do is really commit to doing it in your day. Start small. If you're just starting off, start small. Don't make it this whole thing. Like I have to write this many words or I have to write this many pages or I have to set across this amount of time. Maybe your goal for that day is I'm going to just spend five minutes and not lift my pen off the paper. And even if I'm just writing, I don't know what to write about, or this feels really uncomfortable, just do that. But let your pen just stay on the paper. Just go with it. You're really warming yourself up. You're getting ready. You're, you're, you're just trying something new and stretching your muscles and seeing where it takes you. Yes. But just getting started, it's going to be really powerful. And I know people have a hard time with having enough time. That part is tricky. Um, but I also am going to just be blunt. You have enough time. You just have to decide to do it mm-hmm. and let go of ding, f- ding, ding, <laughs> keeping it real. Yeah, and we, you know, we we spend so much time in our days doing things that aren't as highest of highest service to ourselves. So just, just you know, let go of that excuse. I know you're busy. We're all busy, but just think of the days where you think that your day couldn't be more full than it is already, and then something else gets added to your plate, and somehow it adjusts and time expands, and you make it happen. Make this happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even here's the deal. Even if it's for two minutes, right? I've got this jump start that I teach, and it's a 28 day jump start. And one of the things on it is a little 10 minute exercise circuit. Mm-hmm. And whenever people are like, "Oh, I haven't been doing the exercise thing," and I just my reaction is always, "It's 10 minutes. <laughs> it's not hard. Yeah, it is 10 minutes." And I understand. Yes, we go back to people are busy, right? But when it's 10 minutes. Come on, man. Mm. You know, and then also with this, where I'm saying, do it for two minutes. I don't care what you do. Just do it. Start it. Yeah. Because like I said, we're getting things out of our body. We're getting things out of that monkey mind that are jumping all around, getting all crazy. You're letting yourself naturally bring clarity to what you want, what you need, what you don't want, what you don't need. That's what I really want to drive home is that's, I can't stress enough when you're letting it come out of your body and onto paper. That's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're getting it out of your body. That's what I really want to stress, stress, stress too. And that's why we wanted to talk about how to use writing as part of our self-care practice or for healing. Yeah. If something crazy just happened to you, write it down, get it out of your body, Mm -hmm. right? Process it out that way. Release it, right? Burn it if you want to. Sure. I mean, in a safe contained area, of course, (laughs) disclaimers all over the place, (laughs) but I just, I I have to nail that home. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, Yeah. It's just about getting started. And when I think what happens when we say we don't have enough time, we don't have the right materials, these are excuses. And it's about the next point, which is all about resistance. So what's really going on when we're saying I'm not, I don't have enough time or I'll start tomorrow or I'll get going on this when I have whatever X, Y, Z, it's really about 
there's something else going on. It's usually a fear of maybe being seen. It's maybe a fear of actually facing our stuff. It's maybe a fear of, you know, some narrative based on our history or what we've witnessed in other people of, you know, what's kind of happened when we put ourselves out there or be vulnerable. Um, But what I would say to that is fear and resistance is part of the creative process. Anything that's worth it has some resistance to it. Anything that's worth it mean you know, it's going to, there's going to be some fear there. And my experience with fear, especially around doing creative work is when we're touching onto a place that's really fearful or scary, we're like, oh, I really don't want to do this today. It's usually when I need it the most. And it's usually when a breakthrough is right around the corner Mm. because the other side of fear, I mean, it's two sides of the same coin. The other side of fear is the breakthrough. It's, it's the love, it's the, 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 the light that we have inside. So, you know, when we work through it, that's when we're like, oh my gosh, I did it anyway. How cool is that? And when we're just starting off, the resistance is going to be huge because it's out of our normal scope. It's out of our normal routine. It's putting ourselves out there in a different way. But the more that we do it, the more that we work through the fear, the way easier it gets. Yes. You stretch those muscles. You build those muscles. The things that we thought were scary within ourselves that we were actually afraid to have people write, we, when we write them, we realize actually that wasn't that bad. I can, I can forgive a little bit more. I can let go. I can honor myself a little bit more and, you know, touch into that courage. Love it. Yeah. Love it. And when my healer says, she said the funniest thing one day, she did it so well. She said, when things are getting real hard and you feel like you're having a breakdown, you got to ask yourself, is this a breakdown or a breakthrough? Mm -hmm. And just really emphasize breakthrough, breakthrough. (laughs) Yeah. And sometimes when we are in that space where we're like, ooh we really could be on the edge of a great breakthrough. Right. And there's cycles to everything. We're going to go through hard times, but it's through the breakthroughs that we're actually of highest service to others. And when we become more of ourselves, when we're able to express ourselves more, when we work through it, when you think of the people that we admire in our lives and the ones that kind of are the most impactful or the stories that we've heard, they're the ones who own or have found perspective to be able to share, talk about, or find the wisdom in the harder places, in the places that were scary, the ones that, you know, had the worst stage fright and go up on stage anyway, the ones who had something, you know, that they had a lot of shame about and then share it with others. And that's, and that's where that gold is. So I really encourage people to just hold perspective on the fear and just realize it's it's something that's in our mind that we can let out through the writing process and i really believe and this is something that's been so healing for me it's just the idea that there's always a path under our feet and if we're being pulled to write being pulled to create be pulled to put something into the world be pulled to heal in some way be pulled to work on a certain issue trust that It's coming up for a reason Mm -hmm. and just trust that by moving through it, you're going to be okay and safe. Mm. I think that that's a big piece that people constantly need reminded of is the safety piece, right? Yeah. And another disclaimer, what Jackie and I are not saying is that writing will solve all your problems. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And heal all of your deep trauma. We absolutely encourage finding a therapist or healer that's right for you. However, as a tool, writing is a nice adjunct to that as well. Mm-hmm. And something that a lot of healers will use in the part of their healing process. Yes. I, I'm so glad you said that because I think it's something that, yes, it, writing can open up, especially when we're using it with this intention. It can really open up some stuff. Yes. And if it's something that's ever feeling really overwhelming and, you know, there's a certain thing I think of like some healthy fear, you know, of, yes, we need, let, let's overcome this. I'm going to move through it or normal resistance. But if it's really coming from a really deep place where you need some support and community or, you know, someone to hold that perspective and help hold that container for you. I say there's so many beautiful, amazing people in the world doing great work, you know, therapists who just want to really help and support and and love you to death and just let, you know, that space be held so you feel safe in this process. Um, So I'm with you. I say get community if you're feeling pulled to get community and some support. Yeah, absolutely. And real quick, this is kind of a, a totally separate point, but I just need to address it because of something you mentioned earlier. There is a difference between writing with a pen and paper and typing. Mm. Mm-hmm. Do you want to address that at all? Yeah. Around the around the purpose for healing, let's say. 
Right. I say if you're really trying to do some healing, some deep work, get on, get with a pen and paper, yep. um, get that journal out because we had mentioned earlier around the physicalness of yep. it. I think there's something so powerful of having our hands actually move, yes. being really connected to the words that are coming out. There isn't a separation of a screen. We can kind of feel and touch the words that are coming forward. And we don't get caught up in how fast we can type. We don't get caught up in the little squiggly lines that come up underneath the words saying that we have a spelling or a grammar mistake. Yep. We actually allow ourselves to get into the flow. And the beautiful thing is also what we chatted earlier about is that we get more perspective on the emotions that we're feeling. We can see when our words are tight. When we can see when our words are really flowing and kind of all over the page. We get more information by doing it pen and paper. Yes. But I also want to say too, if you're feeling really inspired and you have no pen and paper and you need to pull out your phone and you need to write down an idea or an inspiration, then do it. But I also strongly advocate if you are doing it for a more sacred purpose, one, honor your work in whichever way it's coming up, but set the intention. If you are starting a regular writing practice or wanting to integrate this more into your life, set some time aside to sit with your journal. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. So as we're approaching the end of our time together, I think we did a pretty good job summarizing, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one one point I wanted to mention yeah. is just that oftentimes we, what I hear a lot from people is, I don't know what to write about. Nothing's really coming up. All that. I say, just ask the question, say, I don't know, you need to write, know what to write about in my journal. Um, but then also one of my favorite um, people online is Seth Godin and he shares There's no such thing as writer's block. When you wake up in the morning, you always have something to say. If someone were to ask you a question, you're going to respond. You know, so just sort of trusting that it's the same with writing. Mm -hmm. You're never going to not have something to say. Mm -hmm. So um, when we think we don't have something to say, that's usually an indication that this is a really exciting practice for you because it will help you realize I do have something to say and it matters and my self-expression matters. So... Just kind of trusting that writing writer's block is another resistance and it's another illusion. Oh, snap. Perfect. Well, what I always ask at the end is if there was one thing that you could shout out to the world, the only thing that people were to really hear today and take away from it, what would you want that to be? Mm. Love your the creative spark that's in, alive in you. I think we all have it. There's not a single person in this world who does not have um, a light inside them that wants to be set aflame. You know, I think there's so much creative potential in all of us and we only use a teeny bit of it. Um, Just we get so caught up in our day-to-day lives. And, you know, I think that the more that we create, the more that we nurture this part of ourselves, that's healing. The more we engage in our self-expression, the more we engage in who we want to become, the more we engage with the questions that are alive in us, you know, the more we answer those spontaneous sparks of inspiration by writing on that napkin, as you had said, Jen, the more we honor this part. And I say, do it because this is what the world needs. It needs creative thinking. It needs us to be our best selves. It needs us to be of highest service. It needs us to let go of the gunk that's getting in our way. Yes. And when we do that, we shine brighter and Every single person has that ability and are already shining. And when we start writing, we start recognizing the places that we are already shining. So perfect. And when we're tapping into who we really are and those highest truths about ourselves, that's when we are able to live our happiest, healthiest life. Yes, exactly. Full circle. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming out here today and being on the show. How can people find out more information about you? Um, I run a website called finallywriting.com. Um, I, I share on there weekly, just, um, strategies and tools and inspirations. It's, um, about the writing process and getting started and, and doing it. And I also help bloggers as well for people who are interested in writing in the online space. Um, particularly because it's connected to this healing, I think intention too, is that we live, I, I'm just kind of in love with the time that we're living in right now. Um, with the online world, I think there's, you know, there's definitely things to be mindful of or, you know, 
about, but we also live in a time where we have the capacity to share with others, to connect with others, to shine really brightly and share that with the world. So, you know, if you're interested in writing or blogging or just learning more about writing for healing, you can check me out on my website there. Um, I'm also on, you know, various social medias as well. So you can find me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and just look for finally writing Look for finally writing. I have the same at okay. finally writing for all of it, but go to finally writing.com and all those links are there. I also have a newsletter on there where I send out once a week, um, tips and inspiration and fun stuff for my community. So I'd love to see you on there. Shoot me an email, super accessible. So shoot me an email. I'd love to hear if you heard heard Jen and I chatting on here and um, let's connect. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Jen. So fun. And thank you for listening to Information and Inspiration with Jen Julius. For more information about me and to check out some of my previously recorded shows, because there are a ton of them now, you can go to jenjulius.com or you can like me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Coaching. Thank you so much for listening. It's an honor to be able to share all this great stuff with you. And until next time, thank you, thank you, thank you.